that there's less water. Well, I know that there's less water because I went to the water table prior, I measured where the water was, I've gone back 10 days later, I've measured, and it's 250 gallons less. However, there's less water. That's what that means. So what ended up happening is the logic really creates new points of analysis. It, before, we never had a means of, and this is, this, it, it really is, like, it's, I don't know how else to say it other than magic. It really is magic, right? It's, it, it's absolutely amazing. From pure conceptual abstraction, we now have a claim that implies this information has already been verified in the world. Or, if you're really lucky, hasn't been verified in the world, but needs to be verified in the world. That's when you get like Nobel Peace Prizes and Pulitzer Prizes and stuff. Because you, you've done the logic in such a way, you assume that someone else has already vir verified it, and you pull some data just to support the point. You appropriate the logic you assume that someone has already verified these claims because the logic mandates that it's been verified or mandates that it needs to be verified and you realize, holy crap, no one's verified this yet. Right? That's, that's when academics get excited. That's when you get excited. Right? Um, and I, I get excited all the time. So implies necessarily that someone has met, I hope this is making sense. This has to make sense. Right? This has to, it makes sense, but it's incredibly difficult um, to get out implies that someone has measured and verified that there is, in fact, less water in the table. That should be clear. We can pinpoint this necessary implication and develop it to further expand or, or augment at precisely this point. Again, you guys remember the system. Find points in the logic that, find points in your argument that the logic created. New talking points. Pull it out of the argument. Set it out by itself. Pull it out. Like, you literally sort of pull it out. You excise it from the argument. And now we're going to analyze this bit by itself. And we want to further flesh out this implication of the negation of the consequence, which is what it really is. It really is just a negation of the consequence, but the real world implications of the negation of the consequence is, however, there is less water in the water table. That implies that there has to be some statistical evidence to demonstrate that the relationship between the water table and conservation efforts um, can result in a claim of the negated consequence. However, there is less water. So now we need to look for that in the world. We pause writing and we go to Google, we go to our search engines, we go to our books, we take a trip to the library, we find research material, and you can write 20 pages that confirm this relationship. I'm choosing to use a paragraph, but you can write 20, you can put your modus tollens on pause in part three and write 50 pages. Here's a relationship that demonstrates the statistical relationship between water conservation and, and here's another one, here's another one, here's another, he says and she says and she says and it is research, her research, blah, 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 blah. Pages, 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 you're really still at, you know, part three, the negated consequence. I hope I'm not going too fast because now my brain's like, I want to just like, just do this, but we can pinpoint this necessary implication and develop it further, expand, uh, develop it to further expand or, or augment at precisely this point, which is the negated consequence. We need to find evidence that has measured and proven that the water table has in fact decreased. Now, finally, we move to the augmented example. And like I did before, I can't write all of this on the board, right, because it's already, once we get to part two, it already gets expanded. So now I'm just going to read. And uh, again, I, this probably won't take as long as I initially thought because I, there's really no need for me to write on the board. So please follow along. We're at um, example two on page seven. So um, embedded, the embedded example one it's exactly like what we did before in section one. This is me, again, keeping the same consistency, keeping consistency in my lecture series so that you have a very precise template to help guide you in how to do this so that when you actually write your papers or whatever you're using this for, you have, a, you know, it has to be a pedagogical. My pedagogical 
sort of mode of educating has to be consistent so that there isn't any ambiguity as what goes next. You copy and paste, literally, we want to flesh this out, this argument out, you copy and paste this example so that we can get a richer, we want to fill out, because we got to get page count, we got to, you know, you know, publishers got to make money, books got to get written, the world needs to be changed. <laughs> so we got to flesh this out. You can't just have this paragraph like this. We want this paragraph, thicken it up a little bit. As I said, you could literally stop at part three, which is the negated consequence, and go and do research and have 50 pages worth of content information before you get to your negated antecedent, which is not A. Um, so let's read it. Oh, um, so the stuff that I've already written is in black. The new stuff, the augmented bits, are in red. So the new, the new stuff that I'm adding is in red. The old stuff, stuff from example one, this formulation remains in black. So here's the augmentation. If water is conserved, then water is stored in the water table. However, in many parts of the United States, of, I probably should have put in the United States of America, however, in many parts of the United States, there is less water in the water table. Quick pause. Why did I use the United States? In formulating this, what I can't reconstruct is how I actually developed this augmented bit. I recognized once I got to part three, which was the negated consequence, that I looked again at the claim at the very top of the page, however, there is less water in the water table. I recognized in constructing this lecture series, well, that imp that's an implication. That means that someone has verified this. So let me go find a site that gives me statistical facts about water being reduced. So I go to Google, I type in water table conservation um, reduction, something like that. Then you guys know, search term, you go site colon dot edu, site colon dot gov, and you just get edu pages, you get gov pages. They're credible pages. You find the data, you find the information that's going to conform, and one of the things that I found had to do with, you know, which I'm going to get to in a second, the relate a new relationship, which I'll talk about later. Um, something that happens like drought in the U.S. So I knew then that I would be using drought in the U.S. I knew then that the explanation, the expansion, which verifies the claim, however there is less water, would take place geographically somewhere. Less water where? Less water in the United States. So I went back and I plugged that bit in. So that's how the United States comes in. Because not only is there an implication that there is in fact some demonstrated proof that water has reduced, there's an implication that this happens geographically somewhere in the world. None of that is inherently in the logic, but the logic says, however, there is less water in the water table, and the question is, how much less, and where in the world is this reduction in water? It's this much less, and it's in this part of the world, it ended up being in the United States. So that's how, it's, I mean, this is, this is how you do it. <laughs> this is how you do it. However, in, at least at this level, however, in many parts of the United States, there is less water in the water table. We need a demonstration of the fact that it has been objectively verified that there is less water. We know that. As a consequence directly of modus tollens. Modus tollens mandates that we have a verification of this reduction because part three, the negated consequence, is precisely that. It is not this. It is less. Note, this next section, and I hope this is, I, I'm not going to, I, I, we're at that point where you sort of need to follow along here because I can't make it any simpler than that, right? If I would have started here, it would have been too confusing. But if you're following me to this point, it's going to gradually get, my vernacular is going to be less what I call ghetto philosophy and just more jargon. But it should make sense, right? Because if you're following me all of these hours to this point, I mean, we're at that point right now where it's going to just be jargon, right? I can't, there's no other way to describe this stuff, right? So note, this next section adds content information, but it is only an expansion of the logic, which requires a demonstration of there being less water in the water table from example one. For example, right, is new content information. For example, the United States Geological Survey, right, I found information that verified the negated consequence, part three of modus tollens, in searching the internet, stumbled across 
the United States Geological Survey, 